Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another PC cooling update for you here on the channel today. Now I'm gonna be featuring two companies today, Thermaltake and Arctic, and neither of these really need much of an introduction for those of you who are regular viewers of my channel. Two of these products in particular, the Tough Fan 12 and then the P12 ARGB recently won some honorable mention awards in a shootout on radiators and heat sinks. And both of these companies have been around a long time in the cooling business. Of course, Thermaltake has a lot of other products as well. Everything from cases and power supplies to desks, mice, and chairs. So I'm not going to be talking about those products so much. I'm just focusing on cooling here. Of course, the original P12 from Arctic has been revolutionary in the cooling business. Starting at 10 bucks, it really performs incredibly well versus the competition. And Arctic has not sat on its laurels. It's been extremely busy in 2021. But before I get to Arctic, let's talk a little bit about Thermaltake, which has also been pretty busy, mainly on the strength of its Tough Fan series, starting with the Tough Fan 12 and then the Tough Fan 14 that I have here. Now the Tough Fan 12 uses a similar design to the Nocto NF-812X25. I've talked about this previously. I'm not concerned about this, okay? A lot of fans use this design. What Thermaltake has done to leverage the strength of this fan is to equip it on a number of its new coolers. The Tough Air series, not to be confused with Tough Hair, and then the Tough Liquid series. So what they're doing is taking this really good fan, which has performed incredibly well in my roundups, either winning or getting honorable mentions every time, and then either design new coolers like the Tough Air series or basically equipping it on an existing radiator with a tough liquid. What I'm actually most excited about is probably the Tough Air coolers because they come in at pretty aggressive price points. The Tough Air 310, which is a single fan version, comes in at 40, and then the Tough Air 510 is a dual fan at 60 bucks. They were originally gonna be a little bit cheaper, but overall the price of the Tough Fan 12 has actually gone up since release. Originally it was gonna be 20 for one and 35 for two, and now it's like 25 for one and 40 for two, and we've seen that price increase get tacked onto the price of the cooler as well. So I think these were probably originally gonna be like, I don't know, 35 and 50 or something like that. So they're a little bit more expensive now. But the Tough Air, 310 is going to go directly up against coolers like the Arctic Freezer 34 I have here. And then this dual fan version is going to go up against the Freezer 34 Duo, which has won a lot of awards on this channel. It was selling for 50 for most of the previous year, but it's now down to $45. So we have a dual fan cooler here at 45 and a dual fan cooler here at 60. Now, in my test, the Tough N12 does best the P12 fan. So when it comes down to benchmarking, this may come out ahead. We'll have to see. So I do have plans to do a new 120 millimeter cooler roundup. I did one in spring of 2020. I don't like to repeat the exact same shootouts all that frequently, but I hope to be able to do this before the end of 2021. And these two coolers will definitely be in it. Now, uh, the other thing I'll mention about Thermaltake is they do, of course, have the Tough Fan 14. A lot of people have been asking me to test this, but unfortunately, I don't have plans to do it right now. I did a 140 millimeter rad fan shootout in the fall of 2020. Again, I don't like to repeat shootouts all that often, and the bench setup I used for testing these has been dismantled. The 280 millimeter rad, which is the main usage case for a fan like this, has been put in a different system. It's not in my cooling test system. So I'm not gonna rejigger everything just to test a single fan. So I know some people are gonna be disappointed about that, but look, the design of this fan is really similar to the award-winning Tough Fan 12. It's just scaled up. Sometimes you go up in scale and things go awry. But my guess is that this actually performs pretty well and the price is pretty good as well. So if you have a 280 millimeter radiator, which again is the main usage case for a fan like this, I have no hesitation recommending this to you. I've been so pleased with the Tough Fan 12 in multiple test scenarios. So again, I'm not gonna test this one, but I'm pretty confident in its performance. That's it for thermal take right now. I actually do have plans also to test the Tough Liquid 360 as a one-off review. In the spring of 2021, I did do a 360 millimeter liquid cooling shootout. 
since I still have my test bench set up from that, I can actually pretty easily do a one-off review. So the Tough Liquid 360 is going to be reviewed on the channel as a one-off review, and I'll be able to include it in benchmarks where this cooler and some other contenders are present as well. So again, that's it for Thermaltake, but I'm really excited to see them leverage the, the superior performance of this fan. I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, and I'm excited about testing their air coolers as well. Now, moving on to Arctic, I know a lot of you guys are waiting for this. I've got a lot of news from Arctic. Arctic absolutely hit it out of the park in 2020 with a ton of great products. I reviewed a lot of them, including the Liquid Freezer 2 280 and then the Freezer 34 Duo, which were both reviewed in 2020. They did fantastically. And then I took up the P12 and wow, things just broke wide open for Arctic. I showed how superior the p12 design was to a lot of other fans out there for both case cooling and radiator cooling or, or cooler cooling either on a radiator or a heat sink like these guys here so the p12 was fantastic but it wasn't perfect so let me first get the bad news out of the way resonance i've talked about it in this channel i've talked about it with arctic look here's the deal with the resonance i have shown it's a real a real thing it's a real phenomenon. I think what happened here was a case of Arctic really pushing the boundaries in fan design and not being able to test every possible parameter. And they had a very different design for the fan, five heavily swept big blades on their fans. And I think one of the problems is basically there's actually kind of a ringing in the blades. Okay, now this is not something that Arctic's confirmed for me. They've told me what it isn't. All right, it's not motor noise. It's not actually like resonance of the chassis or anything that can be dampened with like rubber mounts on your fans. A lot of people have asked me about that. Arctic hasn't really confirmed for me what it is, but I think I know what it is. Uh, the fan blades on some of these fans, because they're heavily swept, they tend to vibrate at certain frequencies and at specific RPMs, that vibration is audible to the user. Doesn't mean that the fan is broken. Uh, but it does mean that it's pretty hard to tune out, all right? So at specific RPMs, you're just going to get that resonance. And I really liked the P12 ARGB that I have here that won a recent award because it uses a ring around the blades, which partially is to diffuse the light, but actually is also a stabilizer. So I found that the resonance of this model is actually not quite as problematic as the original P12. Now, there's also the Bionics version. This is going to be featured in an upcoming shootout of case fans. And I want to make clear, again, Arctic has gone absolutely nuts in 2021 with new product introductions. They have both of these ARGB fans. They really have different applications. So I tested this on coolers, which is, I think, where it's meant to be used. This is really a case fan for a number of reasons. It has a more sophisticated harness system to streamline your cabling. So that really helps when you have a lot of fans, i.e. like a lot of case fans. So just letting you know that. There will be a test of this fan as a case fan in an upcoming shootout because it actually has a, a non-rotating ring for its ARGB effect. It doesn't have a ring around the blades. So we'll have to see how that works out. There may be some resonance in this Bionics version. Another thing I'm going to mention about Arctic is they're also busy on the thermal paste market with the new MX-5 product. Now, this is not something I've included in a shootout because unfortunately it wasn't available when I did my thermal paste shootout. I included MX-4, which did pretty well. It wasn't the winner. Uh, it was about on par with NTH-1 from Noctua. MX-5, according to Arctic, is better than MX-4. I have no doubt that's true. And this is going to continue to be on the market alongside MX-4. So this is now a higher tier product. It's slightly more expensive, but not much more, maybe $10 instead of eight or seven. So not a big deal, of course. Um, if you're trying to eke out a little bit more thermal performance. So definitely consider MX-5. And when I have the opportunity to do another thermal paste shootout, I will include MX-5 for sure. Now, in terms of other products from Arctic, they have an ARGB version of the Liquid Freezer 2360. It's 150 bucks, and I think that's a great value. Now, they haven't updated the cooling block, the pump. It has the same design, no ARGB effects there, but it does have that cool VRM fan on there, and it looks different from a lot of other coolers. So it has its own aesthetic appeal, its own aesthetic flair. And I have found that this fan is actually better than the P12, not only because it has a slightly higher maximum RPM, but because it works better at the same decibel level. So decibel normalized, it's slightly better. And again, it has slightly less resonance than the standard P12. So frankly, 
in my recommendations, if you can spare the extra 25 bucks for the ARGB version of the 360 or maybe the extra 20 bucks for the 240, I'd go for it even if you don't really care about the ARGB effects because the fan's better. And one last product I really want to mention here is the P12 Slim. This was actually released in early 2021. I had intended to include it in a shootout. I actually have a number of competitors rounded up for that shootout. And then of course, other things got in the way and frankly, other Arctic products were released that I wanted to focus on more. Hopefully by the time I do get around to it, there'll be even more competitors in the mix right now. I was gonna be focusing on Scythe with their Cosaflex Slim and then of course, Noctua with their NFA 12 X15. So we know Arctic has been incredibly busy over the past few years releasing new products, particularly in 2021, but do they have anything else coming? Well, a little birdie told me that we may see 140 millimeter versions of this sometime. I don't know if it's gonna be 2021 or 2022, but of course that's on the agenda. And you know, we might see a brand new high-end 120 millimeter cooler from them you know they've got the freezer 34 duo they tried something different with the freezer 50 and it didn't work out that well yeah i didn't review it on the channel i talked about it briefly in the community feed on youtube they had some problems with the cooler so maybe in 2022 we'll see them try to do that again the freezer 34 duo is a really good cooler under 50 bucks but it's never going to challenge the ultimate coolers on the market so i'd really like to see them do something maybe it'll be dual tower maybe it'll be 140 millimeter single tower we'll see um but i think that's coming from arctic as well in the next 12 months so if you have any questions about anything i've said about thermaltake products or arctic products please post them down below. These are two companies I'm really excited about and I'm excited to be able to work with them as well. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot and gives me the incentive to do more videos like this in the future. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I will catch you next time.